Four Americans were kidnapped by a drug cartel, and two of them were murdered when they visited the town of Matamoros, Mexico. So why would the cartel apologize for the incident and hand over its own gunman to the police? Before watching more video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and bell the icon to get more notification. The cartel gunmen, who were trussed up and left by the side of the road, were allegedly accused of acting under their own decision-making and lack of discipline, and of violating cartel norms intended to guard the lives of the innocent in a letter that was left with them. The Scorpions Group, a breakaway group from the dominant Gulf cartel, put their names to it. This letter highlights the peculiar and misguided sense of civic obligation professed by many Mexican drug cartels. Groups like the Gulf Cartel and its rivals, the Sinaloa Cartel, preach a perverted code of ethics under which they believe they are looking out for the most vulnerable in Mexican society, despite the widespread fear they engender through extortion, murder, and kidnapping. Undocumented migrants, who are often kidnapped, raped, and murdered, are excluded from this twisted concept of sympathy and charity. And just like international corporations and mom and pop shops alike have to pay El Piso, the local extortion for the privilege of doing business on their turf, local enterprises aren't exempt. There is, however, a method to the cartel's madness, especially in the poor, mountainous areas and the outlying regions of Mexico where organized crime steps in to fill the void left by the state. Consider their actions in the aftermath of recent natural disasters. When natural disasters struck the western state of Guerrero, criminal gangs offered aid in the form of bags of food and other necessities marked with the initials of their cartel. At the height of the COVID lockdowns, a similar situation occurred. The cartels perceived themselves as upholders of law and order in their communities, and they act accordingly by meting out harsh summary justice to those who violate children or steal from businesses beyond their control. They literally have the power of judge, jury, and executioner. As such, it makes sense that they would turn over their own gunmen following the disaster in Matamoros. They admitted fault, issued an apology, and now they've turned over the perpetrators. Problem solved. But even the Mexican drug cartels know the importance of public relations. Any assurance that the pandemonium has been contained and the citizens of the city have been appeased should be regarded with a large grain of salt, nevertheless. How can we be confident that these five males committed the crime? Is there anyone who can be believed to be telling the truth? Is it the drug gang? Where does one find the office of the state's attorney general? When navigating through muddy waters like those in Tamaulipas state, it's best to trust your gut and assume the worst. A reminder that Gennaro Garcia Luna, once Mexico's public security secretary, and the top law enforcement official who spearheaded the country's war on drugs is now serving time in a U.S. prison after being convicted of accepting millions of dollars in bribes to collude with the Sinaloa cartel. In their statements to the media, Mexican officials have focused on the victims' criminal pasts in the Matamoros case. We were first told that the Americans' visit was related to health tourism, specifically a botched tummy tuck performed in Mexico. A member of the Mexican government emailed me a report about the victim's criminal past the next day, as rumors began to circulate that at least one of them had been convicted of manufacturing illegal narcotics with the purpose to provide. A harmless remark along the lines of, just checking you'd seen this was made. Furthermore, it is unclear whether this was part of a larger effort to victim blame in Mexico, or whether the kidnapping was indeed targeted. A journey I took to Tamaulipas soon after moving to Mexico in 2011 is what this whole disaster has made me think about. It gave me insight into the Mexican drug war that has stuck with me to this day. I met the girlfriend of a former member of the Zetas, a notoriously violent drug cartel, in a nondescript hotel room. Under cover of darkness, with her voice and identity concealed for the camera, she revealed her boyfriend's depraved actions. He obviously worked for a law enforcement agency and was a Zetas member, albeit he didn't specify which, a cop by day and a drug dealer at night. I asked naively, so you're saying that Cardles and the state have a close relationship? 
her terrifying response. No, I'm saying the cartels are the state. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe our channel.